We are now joined by Professor Joanna Walker, Head of the Institution of Risk and Disaster Reduction at the University College London. Professor Walker, thank you very much for joining us here on CNBC TV 18. As our colleague was reporting there, the fault line, and that really seems to have exacerbated the impact of these two devastating earthquakes. Uh, you know, why is it that Turkey finds itself so vulnerable uh, to what we've seen happen? So Turkey itself is situated on what we call a microplate or a block um, the Anatolian block. And this is sandwiched between the Africa plate and the Arabia plate that are moving northwards. And then to the north, it has the Eurasian plate, which is fairly stable. So what's happening is this Anatolian block that Turkey is on is sort of being pushed out um, westwards on these faults. And to the south, it's the East Anatolian fault where this earthquake occurred. And to the north is the North Anatolian fault, um, which moves in the opposite direction, but it's all pushing that Anatolian block or Turkey out to the west, which means you have these two long fault lines. So the East Anatolian fault line is about 700 kilometers long. The North Anatolian fault is actually 1500 kilometers long. So that's a lot of fault there. And these are fault systems. It's not just one line mm. um, where earthquakes can occur. And they're capable of hosting these large magnitude seven, magnitude eight earthquakes. So we are gonna see earthquakes in this region a lot. Well, uh, you know, hopefully not as devastating as the ones that we've just seen. But, you know, as Hadley was reporting, there are people uh, afraid to go back into their homes because of the possibility of an aftershock. And we have seen many aftershocks after these two large earthquakes. Uh, you know, in your assessment, uh, what should Turkey and Syria prepare themselves for in light of what has already taken place? So aftershocks are inevitable. Um, generally, aftershocks are, are smaller than the main events and the number will decrease over time. So over the first day um, to the second day, you maybe expect 10 times fewer. Um, but the problem with aftershocks is they're occurring in an area where there's already been extensive damage. So you may have buildings that might look to the untrained eye like they're not damaged or may look like they're only very partially damaged, but they might have severe structural weaknesses in them. So people have got to express severe vigilance if wanting to enter or go in any buildings, one, because they might be you know, on the edge of collapse, but also because of this risk of aftershocks. As well as aftershocks, though, we also have the risk of triggered events. Mm. So along these long fault lines, when there's one earthquake, it can actually trigger another event, not, not just an aftershock associated with the event that occurred, but another event that can even be larger than the previous event. So it is possible that further along this fault, we could see more activity. So it, it is a scary time for the people who are there, especially as you know, they're scared to go in their homes, they're outside in the cold, and a lot of them are reporting that they just, you know, they don't know what to do, and, and they're really suffering. Yes, uh, you know, the suffering is immense, as we can see. But, you know, you talked about these long fault lines, 700 kilometers, 1500 kilometers, and you said that uh, we need to be prepared for the possibility of other events and possibly even more devastating events uh, or similar events. Now, is there any way to be better prepared? Is there any early warning systems that can be used to try and assess the risk? So there's warnings at a different time periods. So in terms of knowing that there's a higher risk, this is looking over sort of months, year or a few years um, along the way where we can have these triggered events and aftershocks for an earthquake of this magnitude, we would expect to see for a period of up to a year. Um, so that, that will occur. But in terms of being prepared and warning systems, with earthquake warning systems, you, you may have a few seconds warning um, and you can very quickly try and take cover. If you're outside, stay away from buildings. Um, if you're inside, try and stay sort of within you know, stronger elements and particularly protect your head. But in this area, um, as people have said, we have a huge number of refugees. We've got the background of conflict. So what we don't know is how many people have access to any warning mm. or knowledge about their area or where to go and what to do in this situation. So it's it really is likely that we see this death toll increasing over time as we you know, discover more and more people who are trapped. And rescue and search operations proving to be very challenging at this point in time on account of the devastation that we've already seen as well as the severe weather uh, that uh, we uh, are seeing in Turkey at this point in time. Professor Falker, many thanks for joining us here on CNBC TV 18. Appreciate your time. We will head into a break, but up next, Adani Group stocks recover 